Hey YouTubers, welcome back. So that video that I did yesterday with the nickel strip, I learned a bunch. Thank you very much to all the comments. Um, I'm still in the process of, of replying to them all. I've read them all. I've taken a few of my own notes and something that I'd like to try in the next round. Now I've already done a charge and discharge test. I, for some dick reason, I guess you'd say, I didn't put the positive and negative at the other ends, opposite ends of the pack. Quick five minute upgrade to that battery pack. So we need the positive on one end. We've doubled up all the, the spot welds on the positive as well. On the negative side, we've taken it off the other side for the battery. And we've added some extra nickel strip there. So let's put this on a discharge test and see what it does. Decided to go capped on tape and painter's tape on one side to try and work out which is the best way of actually doing this so we can get some more data and then I've got the tape there the electrical tape and then capped on tape on that side so we'll see what results we get from the thermal camera I'll flip it over halfway through but let's run this for an hour hour and a half get this discharged and see what results we come up with All right, there we go, 45 amp hours taken out of the battery on that test, that was at 30 amps. All right, let's have a look at the thermal image. We got 43 degrees there in the crosshairs. 62 on the cells, so the cells are still nice and hot. Uh, it looks like it doesn't matter what we cover this nickel plate with, whether it's capped on tape, electrical tape, or painter's tape. Uh, the cells are still getting very, very hot, so that doesn't like the 30 amps. But as you can see from the nickel strip, there's no obvious hot spots. And that is the, what's that, the positive side? And go the negative side. Again, no, no real hot spots. You can see a little bit more heat along the top here. Now this was along the bottom, so there's more heat in these bottom cells. And we've got the tape along the bottom. So you might be able to see a little bit of a difference between the two, just the installation properties. However, it didn't have, you can see here somewhere, uh, it didn't have much of an effect on the, on the cell temperature, still about 60 odd degrees. So that is a limitation of the actual cell quality, type, manufacturer, whatever. But that doesn't really matter. It was a good test and now I'm smarter for it. Now I've just finished doing a whole bunch of short circuit tests trying to get it to short out. I was getting the fuse to break at about half a second or something. It was like glowing red then blown like really quickly. Uh, well, at least fairly quickly. I've got some really odd results from that. Now I'm going to put it down to, I don't exactly have any scientific equipment. Um, but what I can say is my fuses, my fuses that I tested a long time ago at about 6 amps blew after, well didn't blow at all, and this blew first. Again, I don't know of the maths or the chemistry or whatever that does it, but I'll insert a video here. Uh, here's my solution to actually testing the fuses. Uh, we won't talk about how accurate it is because I don't know how to quantify accuracy. I've got a peak meter here. Uh, I, again, I don't know how accurate it is. It is got, has got inrush, so it is measuring the most amount of energy going in at, at the highest peak. I think that's how you define inrush. Um, so, and then I've got a smaller cable here. So let's just try and blow a few fuses and see what happens, I guess. So we've got that zeroed out. So I'll just pick a point on the pack, touch. So that failed pretty quickly, but didn't give me the inrush meeting reading. All right, we'll try it again. Try it on another one.
Could be argued that I'm unnaturally stressing that fuse as well. There we go. Is there a way that I can get both of those in shot? Fuse there. Let's try that again. Yeah. Okay, so that's done. That went to 144 amps. That got very, very, very hot. <laughs> this is not the safest way of doing this, but it is a way of testing it, I guess. 144 amps, that's incredible. Um, it also leads me to believe how accurate this is. But let's clear that out. It's got inrush. We've got it up to another fuse there. So let's suck it and see. And it didn't record anything. Try another one. Uh, inrush again. And we're not recording in rush. Excellent. Right yeah, try another one. We'll get this test right yet. Hold that up. Three, two, one. Four point four amps. Must have glowed there for about a second, I reckon. I'll try another one. Twenty one amps. I got to remember to stop it from uh, jumping down and touching the nickel. Try it again. Fourteen amps. I guess there's lot. There's way too many variables for me to be able to do this and do this in my shed. I like the way that Tom Ameren did it where it was a repeatable test because let's face it the the pressure in which i put this on the battery is going to dictate how many amps and stuff like that as well let's go again put this in where you can see it i didn't record in rush here's an interesting test let's try I've got a I've got a uh, a fuse here, so let's try and look at that fuse. Focus on that fuse. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to on the cell I've got it hooked up to the cell, and I want to see if my fuses blow before Tom's do. I can never get you both in shot. We'll just focus on my fuse. We'll have a look at the results of the other fuse in a second. There we are. So I'm going to put it up here. So this is only three cells. See if my fuse blows or the nickel strip. Well, that's interesting. 
Tom's blue and mine didn't. My fuse wire is still intact. All right, let's do another test where you can actually see both. Again, the fuse is just here, it's still intact. We'll see if Tom's goes or mine goes. And Tom's went first at 19 amps. After running through this little test and thinking in my head that uh, my fuses weren't good enough, I kind of realized that it was also drawing current from the three cells that the nickel strip was attached to on my battery, as well as the fuse. So that probably solves that whole mystery right there, I reckon. Interesting results, right? I don't get it, but results are results. What have you done and tested your thing? your way of doing it or how do you think I should retest again uh, I don't have any variable power supplies or anything like that to actually do it so uh, I'm a bit stuffed there moving on um, cell gets hot testing um, so the the 80 no the 20p gets hot testing so I've built this well I've started building this I haven't finished it yet I've done the positive side That's not bad, just 10 minutes. And she's all spot welded up. Now in that 10 minutes, I have to admit, these electrodes got very, very hot. And in fact, if we quickly take them over to the thermal camera, we won't stop the other test, but the battery's nice and warm. There's a battery. So the battery's reading about 50 degrees. 63 degrees up that end. So the battery is well and truly nice and warm in that 10 minutes. And we'll have a look at the electrodes here on the K-Weld. I don't want to stop this other test. Again, it's a bit of a reflective surface. But that was, that was getting so hot it was uncomfortable. That is saying about 50 or 60 degrees, but the copper does cool down quite quickly so it's lost quite a bit of temperature and it was actually getting uncomfortable to use by the time I got to this end and that's all doubled down so there's four spot welds three in some cases um, because I didn't line it up properly but rubber bands really helped lining it all up getting it all on there very very fast uh, I would recommend this way of doing it over soldering or um, spot welding fuses this is quick and I would absolutely, just for the sheer speed alone, I'd do both sides. It's actually worth the little bit of cost to do both sides per cell. The only drawback I can see so far, and I think I've gone through this in the comments on Facebook already, is replacing a cell. Um, a cell will not come out through that hole, so you'd have to peel back, cut or something, or rip it all off and start again. So I'm not sure how you deal with that, but certainly cell maintenance is definitely a drawback of this product. That's the, that's the most critical thing I can find with it so far. So it is absolutely fit for purpose. Now, the next test I wanna do is grab it. I'm actually put that back over there and I hurt my back. Um, I am recharging the battery. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's there, sitting there charging at the moment. Um, I'm charging it back up and I'm going to do a short circuit test. I'm just going to negative to positive and see if I blow the fuses. So here's my plan, that dodgy setup there. I'm going to throw it underneath, put a little bit of pressure on it. Now I expect this just to spark and not do much. Well, let's try it anyway. Hey, can we see that? All the all the fuses heating up. <laughs> Smells good, that's for sure. Now just check those cells. There's no apparent heat in those cells, so I think we're good to continue. Remember the disclaimer, kids, don't try this at home. Check all my cameras again. Audio. Let's see what happens when I hold this on. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. That cable's getting really, really hot. No. Cable's getting too hot, I can't even hold it. Let's try those cells, make sure the cells aren't getting hot. The cells aren't getting hot at all, which is good. Grab some pliers or something. Smells good, that's for sure. Need to put some pressure down. We're starting to get some failures. Not too many. They're slowly going out. That's not happening anywhere near as fast as I would have expected. It's just glowing. That's it. I run it outside just in case. You can't see anything there. She's not smoking or anything. Grab that thermal camera, put it on there. What have we got temperature wise? 50, 55 degrees by the look of that. I mean, if nothing else, it looked cool. Hindsight says I probably should have done that in the outside, not in the workshop. But I did have a big bucket of water beside me. I should have showed it. And a, a fire extinguisher, not that that would have helped. But looks like we've got one cell there that's really hot. It's probably because just on top of it there is where I was connecting up the car's going past thank you very much so the cell that's actually hot is there and if you look at the thermal image uh, can't even get it in shot but it's that cell there that's hot so I dare say that is gonna be no longer a working battery still cool nonetheless now I have done this on my own batteries here and it doesn't blow the fuses on just a on like an ADP pack, a 1S. I have done 14S and it blows the shit out of all the fuses on the most positive or the most negative cell, I can't remember. But every every fuse blows when you do the whole pack. So I, I again, I don't know why that happened, so I won't pretend to know. I'm no expert at this. I learned from you guys in the comment section below. But what else have we got? We I, I did have a list. I'm trying to do this quickly, so it's actually cost effective to make these videos. Um, and also a small pack, so I'm going to get some nickel strip and then make a small pack and do a charge and discharge test um, at, at a lower amp rate and stuff like that, see if I can... Oh yeah, who am I kidding? That's enough, this has gone long enough. What have we got? Something around 18 and a half minutes, that's ridiculous for a peep video. Right yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Debriefing in the next video, um, something with that in the next video and I might even finish this in the next video. But Chubis, thank you very much for tuning in. It's a school night tomorrow, so it might be in a couple of days before I get the next one out, but thank you very much for tuning in. Do that thumbs thing if you're still here, eh? I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.